Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, Madam City Clerk, quote of the week. Thank you. Strive for integrity. That means knowing your values in life and behaving in a way that is consistent with these values. Thank you very much. Call the 23rd regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Born. Here. Balk. Excuse. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Excuse. Verhasselt. Excuse. And Wangaman. Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask Alderman Hannah to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Approval of the minutes, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Harold Peak to be considered for the Board of Appeals to fill the unexpired term of Brian Versey, which expires April 30, 2010. Harold Peake will join the committee as second alternate. Dale Feld will move from first alternate to full member, and Robert Tim will move from second alternate to first alternate. Signed by the mayor. That appointment will lie over. Confirmation of appointments. Michael Dietz to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Patrick Dugan, whose term expires on 4-30-09. Need a motion to confirm? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is approved. Continue. Michael Johnson to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee to fill the unexpired term of Patrick Dugan, whose term expires on 4 30 09. Signed mm -hmm. by the Mayor. Any motion to confirm? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment approved. Todd Thone to be considered for the Board of Contractors Examiners to fill the unexpired term of Andrew Hopp, which expires April 30, 2009. Todd Thone will join the committee as an alternate. Dan Don will move from alternate to full member. Signed by the Mayor. Need a motion to confirm? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? <coughs> there is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Thank you very much, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. <coughs> Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First this evening will be Henry Capitillo. If you would come up to the microphone, please. And Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street. <coughs> North, I'm, so, I'm sorry. North 38th Street. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. I had something already prepared for you, but what I'm going to do is I think I'd rather tell you about the people that we serve in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, if you recall, on, on uh, the 18th of this month, we received a letter from the city assessor saying that our property tax exempt status was going to be taken away and that we would be paying property tax effective as of this year. Part of it was that I think that the city assessor really does not believe that we are an asset to this community, that we help the low income, the lowest of the low income. I'm gonna give you several stories of individuals that we have, and you can decide for yourself. Um, I'll use first names only. Um, Darlene was an individual that came to us seeking housing. What happened is she was turned away from the housing authority, which is tax exempt and which is part of the city. 
They would not provide housing for her because she did not qualify. She uh, didn't have income at the time. The Salvation Army helped her. We accepted her. We provided housing. The course of the time of her stay there, she ended up having a stroke. She couldn't pay her rent. We could have evicted her, but we didn't. Um, after the stroke, we had her, we helped her. She came back to live at the boarding house. She was behind on her, on her rent probably up to six months. We did not evict her then. She applied for her Social Security. She eventually got it. And believe it or not, you can probably guess where she's living now. She's living as, at the housing authority. They provided her housing, but only after turning her away and actually us helping her. That's one case. Another one we had is a vet that basically I saw walking down the street one day and I couldn't figure out why he was walking the way he was. I asked him, I said, David, what's the matter? I said, were you drunk? Because he does have alcohol problems. He said, no. He says, I can't see. And I says, what do you mean you can't see? He says, I'm going blind. And I said, well, have you gone to the, to the, uh, the VA? And he says, well, they're telling me that I can't get help and it's going to be about two years before I can get in to get surgery. And it was just cataracts. I called the state of Wisconsin. They, they sent an individual to talk to, to uh, Dave. Nothing happened. What they did provide him with was a cane and told him that once he became blind that they could help him adjust to being blind. I said, that's absurd. A person that can get an operation can stop from going blind. So I got on the phone. I, I got a hold of the VA. I called them. I said, the next call that I'm going to be calling is my congressman and my senator. And this is what I'm going to tell them, that this person, when he enlisted to go into the Marine Corps, I said, do you think that he would have gone in if, if uh, 10 or 15 years later he would have known that he was going to go blind and you wouldn't provide any kind of assistance to help? I said, it's a simple operation. Well, shortly after that, I think it was a day later, they called me. They said, We've, we've scheduled him, he will go to surgery, it's going to be about a month. Dave can see now. We had another vet that was at our, our place, and he had alcohol problem too, to the point where he was pretty much, and he also had cancer. I asked him, have you seen a doctor? He says, it doesn't do any good, won't do any good, because he said, I'm terminal. Well, what happened is, I would see him, and I could tell he was getting worse every day, to the point where he, he couldn't hardly ever even walk anymore. He had sores on his feet. Uh, his room was a mess, and I finally said, this is it. I called, I called the social workers. They said, we can't do anything. A social worker came there and said, yes, this is a bad situation, but we really can't do anything. I contacted the veterans uh, individual that works with the vets. He came down. Eventually, it was between him and myself that we contacted the police. The gentleman was taken to the hospital on Friday. He passed away on Saturday. At least he was in a bed, and uh, he did not die in just such a dirty room if you could have seen it excuse me Henry. sorry to interrupt but would you like your additional minute yes thank you that's just some of the people that we help i can tell you of a multitude of these individuals that we have now we do provide a service we have social workers that have referred individuals that could not get housing anywhere that are in our boarding house now we work with the Salvation Army. When they need place for someone to stay, they refer them to us. And they come, and they're not working. They don't, they don't have a job. We let them in. How many landlords are going to do that? I can tell you, as of today, what we have in collection is pretty much close to $100,000 that we have lost on rent for people that we have not evicted, that we have helped, and 
this is the organization that Home Inc. is. You may not like what I come to say here when I come to the council. I think part of the reason that this happened is because I am so vocal Excuse and that me. I do come here and speak out. Excuse me, Henry. Your minute is up. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, next on our list would be Wendy Schmitz. Wendy, can I have your home address, please? 25 Hine Avenue, H-E-I-N, Plymouth. And do you want to pull the mic just a little bit closer to you, Wendy, so everybody can hear you? And go ahead. You'll have Marge five minutes. Marge will let me know if she can't. It is with great pleasure that I present the annual report from the Senior Activity Center tonight. We had an amazing year. You have the report in front of you, so I will just point out the highlights. In 2008, we had 32,342 visits to the center. That is 1,600 visits more than the year before, nearly 5,000 visits more than 2006. When you consider that many of our participants move into assisted living units, no longer can get out or unfortunately pass away, that is considerable growth. We're growing at approximately 20 new people a month. Since the Friends of the Senior Activity Center hired a part-time volunteer coordinator, we have consistently seen 195 volunteer visits a month. 6,763 hours were donated last year. If those people were paid minimum wage, they worked the equivalent of just under $44,000. The Friends organization administers all of the program funding at the center. Participants paid over $24,000 for their programs and activities. Through fundraising efforts, individuals and businesses have contributed a further $13,000. Staff and volunteers conduct 38 different programs every month. Lakeshore Technical College started community education computer classes on Thursday evenings. My staff responded by offering to teach evening art classes, wood carving, and line dancing to accommodate younger, busier seniors who still work. When the mayor put out an appeal to save the Memorial Day parade, our staff responded. When Alderman Corey Bauck asked for volunteers at the Spaceport Pilot Project, our seniors responded. When the city clerk appealed for help to get out a record number of absentee ballots, our seniors completed the project in record time. When residents of the city, the state, and the country bemoaned the fact that our money was worth less than ever before, my seniors suggested that we charge everyone an activity fee of a dollar a month, which would provide us with at least $6,000 a year. They have formed a fundraising committee and have sold baked goods to visitors who come to have their taxes prepared by our senior volunteers. They've raised over $200 in just two weeks. We collaborated with Two Rivers to offer day trips, share expenses, and their profit. We worked with the county, and for the first time since 1989, we are receiving a monthly stipend toward utilities. We offered a breakfast for the brain curriculum, which was so popular, we had to add additional afternoon sessions. We now offer a Wii system, and with our big screen and sound system, it really feels like a bowling alley. We won an award for our cable TV show. Seven people went to Italy in November. Ten people are leaving for Beijing in a few weeks, and I look forward to the commission check. The mayor recently said that our place is a happy, busy, bustling place. In fact, the only complaints we receive are that, are that there is nowhere to park and that there is not enough room for all the programs we want to conduct. We are bigger and better and yet stayed within budget. Our seniors don't whine about wanting the city to provide more. They are responsible and resourceful. They want your support and your guidance in planning for the future. We want to be ready for the largest group of retirees this country has ever known, the baby boomers who started to retire in 2006. 
Our seniors aren't in rocking chairs, but as the community learned from our music festival last July, Reagan seniors rock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. <clears throat> Next on the list is Gary McMullen. Gary, if you could come up to the front mic, please. And Gary, if you want to move the mic up a little, it'll give you. Okay. And I need your home address. It's N1552 Lynn Road, Adel. Lynn Road, L Y N N? Correct. Correct. Adel? Okay. Correct. You will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'm not prepared like everybody else, I guess. I came because I have a business on Indiana Avenue, and that's my concern tonight. Uh, until I got the letters from the city, I was unaware about the 25% that we'd have to pay towards redoing the surface of the street all, all, but, all you know, out to the center of the road. I, I was unaware of that because most of the cities, I went to school in Plymouth, and I mean, my brother works in Plymouth, and they take care of it right up to the curb. Uh, I talked with Gene, and I talked with Bill, and they explained to me that uh, years back, I guess the city passed this resolution that, okay, everybody's going to pay 25%. Uh, <clears throat> Me never living in the city, I thought that was a little unfair because I'm paying 25% of something where everybody's going to be using it. I think this should be spread out over the entire tax base, not just the people from 14th Street up to 17th Street or whatever street you happen to be doing at the time. Um, the other concern I had, and I talked with the engineers, was project cost because I realized this was probably cut and dried two years ago, maybe three years ago, because you have to plan ahead for everything. Right now, I'm sure if you went to contractors, there's a lot of people out there just looking to do work. And I'm sure that it could be done for a lot less. But I'm guessing you cannot renegotiate this because it's a signed contract. Uh, with that thought in mind, I, I talked with Gene. I, I said, you know, if you could give us a tax break, give us some kind of tax break. Because right now, when we shut down a street, we rely on business, we rely on traffic. It's not going to be there. They say, OK, I can come in through the alley. But there's only two of us that really have access to the alley. That'd be myself, the laundromat, and Bourbon Street. Uh, the music store, the stitchery shop, they have a big fence back there. That people can't crawl over the fence. They can't get to their places. So <coughs> just looking at the economy the way it is, I mean, nobody's making money hand over fist anymore. We're just struggling just to stay alive. And uh, it is a burden. Uh, <clears throat> one of the other things I've thought Red was, you know, if you can't afford it, the city's going to extend you a loan at 7% interest. I'm thinking, why do they have to make money on this on top of everything else? So to me, it's a burden. Plus, now I've got to pay the city for the burden. And it's, it just doesn't seem fair. So I'm looking for any assistance that anybody can put in and say, OK, listen, these are not normal times we're going through. Uh, I read in the paper where you want to bring new business into Sheboygan. I'd sure like to keep the old businesses alive and afloat and keep them going because I think that's what killed 8th Street years ago. We decided to bring in these malls and everything else and everything keeps spreading out and it's like we don't worry about the old businesses, we want new business. Well, <laughs> the old business is what built you, boy, to begin with. So and that's basically what I have for tonight. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Mm, excuse me. Uh, next on the list is Carter Paulus. And Carter, can I have your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Good evening to all. On Christmas Eve of 1936, two months before I turned seven years of age, I received the next morning a wonderful surprise. My dad had worked hard and bought me an American Flyer train. And that's when I had my first interest in trains. And having fulfilled all of society's obligations and priorities, and finally was able to retire, around 1988 or 89, I was looking for a railroad group to become a member of. And I came upon a group here in Sheboygan. And this is what this is all about. The Sheboygan Society of Scale Model Railroad Engineers Limited. 
has been serving our community for 32 years. Practically all youthful and charitable groups, along with its citizens in Sheboygan, have enjoyed and used our society's services over those 32 years as outlined in our letter to the city assessor. In order to satisfy legal requirements for our 501c3 status, as outlined in our Constitution and bylaws, we use the words as shown in our purpose for our existence, all of which the city has on file. We are primarily a historical and technical society and have become a repository for materials in those two categories and service our community in these two categories. That is the exemption status we have been given by the city for all these years. This is just one of the ways that societies throughout our country satisfy legal requirements for their existence so they may continue to devote all of their energies to service to the community. Nothing has changed in law or in the assessor's state manuals regarding our particular classification. Assessors have stated in Sheboygan from the beginning that there is no reason, legal or moral, why our status should be denied. But a recent assessor's meeting with unknown motivations decided on, in our opinion, vague grounds to go after 10 of our local organizations and deny them tax-exempt status in order to gain further revenue. We as a society do not have the wherewithal to fight this in a court of law or a state, all of which is available to us. We can only appeal to you on moral grounds of service to our community. Society continues to enrich itself and the community with higher interests, pursuits, and protections of its heritage. We ask you to let us continue our efforts even in these difficult times. Otherwise, we really will have to close our doors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carter. And last on our list would be Joanne Scribner. Joanne, if you could come up to the front, please. <laughs> Joanne, if you could give me your home address. Three Seneca Trail, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. First of all, thank you, Mayor Perez and Sheboygan Common Council again for another chance to speak to you tonight. Um, my topic tonight is, uh, the, as Mr. McMullen was talking about, the, uh, uh, the uh, assessment on the work on Indiana between South 14th and South 17th Street. Sheboygan Press, uh, Wednesday, February 25, 09. Panel won't drop assessment for street work. The Sheboygan Common Council is wrestling with ways to try to make the high cost of special street assessments more palatable to property owners, but it's un unlikely that Alderman would consider repealing the city's long-standing ordinance of requiring people who live along a street schedule for road work to help shoulder the bill. Several neighbors who are facing assessments of several thousand dollars for work to be done on Indiana Avenue have complained to city officials that they can't afford to pay the bills. The $1.22 million project to rebuild Indiana from 14th to 17th streets starts in the spring and 39 property owners have received assessment notices. The preliminary cost estimate for the assessments is $80 a linear foot. 
at Monday night's Finance Committee meeting, Alderman talked about creating a fund to help homeowners in financial need pay their assessments, and there's also a proposal to lower the interest rate for people who work out a payment plan with the city. However, the committee voted unanimously to file a resolution supported by the Public Works Committee to repeal the special assessments for the Indiana Avenue project. The Common Council is expected to take up the issue at its next meeting on March 2nd, tonight. I cannot see how this will pass council because it would be so unfair to everybody else in the city, said Alderman Marilyn Montemayor. Finance Committee members said they sympathize with those getting socked with the big bills in a tough economy, but said residents all over Sheboygan have been paying special street assessments for decades and it would not be right to change the ordinance for those living on Indiana. It's tough to just cherry pick one or two spots where you don't do it consistently because that hurts all the rest of the people who play by the rules, Gish has said. We want to be sensitive and we want to help, but repealing is not the answer. Officials said it would be difficult to shift the cost of street assessments to the city's overall tax levy because it would force everybody's tax bills to jump higher than allowed by state law. It may also hamstring the city's ability to fix streets. Your constituents are going to be screaming when they see their tax bill the next year, City Attorney Steve McLean said. The Finance Committee is considering lowering the in interest rate for people making payment plan arrangements with the city from 7% to a figure 1.5% above the city's general obligation bond interest, which last year stood at 3.4%. Which would make a big difference to Leroy Jacket and, and uh, Donna, who own Westside Bakery, 1422 Indiana, of the lower interest rate. Gisha Starr suggested a $50,000 fund to help people who need help. Uh, Alderman Jean Kittleson uh, said that uh, although the resolution supporting the repeal of the assessments was endorsed, it was never meant to actually rescind them, but to suspend them until the city looked at different options to help the neighbors. We're not going to get rid of the special assessments in the city. That has to stay, she said. It has to stay. I don't know why we have to have assessments. Uh, who is the city? The city is the taxpayers. Everybody in the city probably uses Indiana between 14th and 17th Street every single day. You have to use that street to go to Westside Bakery and get a donut or a cake or you have to go and maybe use it to get to the center, UWS or Lutheran High or Kohler Company or place in Kohler. Everybody probably uses almost all the city streets almost all the time. So I don't, and I have not taken Taxation 101, so I don't know all the state codes and the city codes on how to tax. But I would suggest that why don't, instead of uh, assessing those people in that area, just repeal that ordinance that has been on the book for how many years now? I don't know. When did that ordinance even come on the books? Just spread it all over the city. Every taxpayer that way you don't have people who are you know, assessed a million dollars for their particular stretch of street and someone else is assessed $100 for their particular stretch of street. That's not fair. So I would suggest get rid of the ordinance, repeal that thing, and spread the bills all over the city to every single taxpayer because every single taxpayer probably uses all the streets almost all the time and those businesses like Mr. McMullen over there, uh, they need uh, some breaks. And I don't think they should be forced, especially if they're older on Social Security, they're in their 70s or 60s or whatever they are. Excuse it's not me, right. Are you, don't, you need your extra minute? I do, thank you. Okay, go ahead. So they shouldn't, I don't think that this, those people should have to be forced to pay a special fee. I think it should be spread throughout every single taxpayer, every single driver, adult driver, who is a taxpayer property owner in the city. Looks like Carol Guy is uh, concerned about that too because she says that uh, the uh, ordinance should be repealed because it is unfair to retirees on Social Security and those on busily, busy, heavily traveled streets. And don't forget a lot of semis go on Indiana Avenue and not a lot of semis go on the residential areas. So. Last point, we need a zoo, we need a museum that's actually fun to go to, we need a roller skating rink that's full time, and if we don't get some fun stuff in Sheboygan, uh, people are going to go say bye, we'll go to Branson, we're going to have a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
That's it. <laughs> Thank you to all those that addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is uh, six hearings. I will read each one and then ask if there's anyone that would like to address the council with respect to any one of those six. If you wish to do so, please specify which one. The first hearing is to rezone property located at 605 South Wildwood Avenue from Class SR5 Suburban Residential to Class Urban Industrial Classification. Second hearing, to repeal and recreate the City of Sheboygan's Floodplain Zoning Ordinance be an Appendix A to the Sheboygan Municipal Code. The third hearing, for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in North 5th Street from Center Avenue to New York Avenue. The fourth hearing, for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in 502 and 504 Pennsylvania Avenue and 616 North 6th Street. The fifth, for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in New York Avenue, 4th, 5th Street, 5th Street uh, to New York Avenue to Wisconsin Avenue and 610 North 6th. And then the final and sixth hearing for the proposed assessments for water main installation in North 5th Street from Pennsylvania Avenue to Center Avenue. Is there anyone that would like to address a council with respect to any of those? Sir, would you please come up to the podium? <clears throat> Sir, can you tell me which one you would like to talk about? Yes, I'd like to talk about the uh, number one. The first one, the Wildwood. Right. <clears throat> and I need your name. My name's Tom Clark. Tom Clark. And I live at 612 South 22nd Street. South 22nd? That's correct. Go ahead. Uh, I have bought the, the property that's... Uh, at 605 South Wildwood Avenue, and uh, I oppose the rezoning. Uh, I agree with the uh, decision by the Planning Commission to uh, uh, not rezone it, uh, basically for the reasons they stated that it would adversely affect the uh, properties, the single-family dwellings at this, pro at this location, and that uh, it doesn't fit the neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood's all residential. I would like to keep it that way. So uh, we'd like to have it stay the way it is and follow the Planning Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council with respect to any of the six hearings? Is there anyone else? <coughs> Is there anyone else? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearings under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda 23-1 to 23-19. Oh, Vice President Barr. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to say a few words, even though it's on the consent agenda tonight, I wanted to say a few words about <clears throat> document number 2319, uh, which is an ordinance that I, uh, that I crafted, and I want to give the uh, people at home a little background on it. <clears throat> Back in November, uh, in the November election down in Milwaukee, there was a group that brought forward a direct legislation referendum. And a direct referendum legisla uh, uh, a, a direct legislation referendum that passes automatically becomes enforceable by the by the city council uh, automatically. They don't even have a vote on it. <clears throat> the referendum in Milwaukee back in November asked the question, and I don't have it verbatim, but it went something like this. It asked the citizens of Milwaukee, "Would you favor your employers having to pay you?" paid sick leave, whether you were full or a part-time employee of that company or business. And not surprisingly, it passed overwhelmingly with about 70% of the vote. Uh, Mayor Barrett opposed the law. The majority of the Milwaukee City Council opposed the, uh, th the uh, referendum. Uh, the equivalent of the Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce and all the business organizations. The referendum passed and is now in the courts and it is a business and job killer for 
not only the city of Milwaukee, but any other city in Wisconsin that has a similar referendum if it, if it would come to fruition. Uh, the the, the uh, uh, referendum, I'm sorry, the ordinance that I crafted for the city of Sheboygan follows a uh, similar ordinance, ordinance that was passed in the city of West Dallas back in, uh, in December, preventing a municipality from imposing wage and benefit requirements on its private business employers. A number of other suburbs of Milwaukee, there's, I believe, uh, so far, uh, Brown Deer has approved an ordinance like this. West Dallas, South Milwaukee, Franklin, Wauwatosa, Oak Creek, uh, Greenfield, St. Francis, Cudahy, and Glendale. And uh, I wanted to bring this forward as a proactive uh, proactive action for our local businesses here in Sheboygan. Uh, what's happened in Milwaukee is that a number of businesses who lease property in the city of Milwaukee as a result of this, uh, of this referendum, if, if it goes through, are not going to renew their leases in Milwaukee and are going to be moving to suburbs. A number of companies have reduced their vacation. For example, if you have three weeks of vacation, Many companies have reduced the vacation for their employees down to two weeks. One longtime business in Milwaukee, Heinemann's Restaurant, they've been in business for 30 years in Milwaukee, recently closed their door because of some debt issues. But the owner of that company said the, the straw that broke the camel's back was the possibility of this ordinance uh, getting out of the courts with a favorable recommendation in Milwaukee. And they simply said, we cannot afford to have our part-time employees call in on a minute's notice and require paid sick leave, and how are we supposed to run our business? Uh, so I brought this forward as a proactive measure for the city of Sheboygan, and as we go into the future, uh, this governing body in the city of Sheboygan, if this ordinance passes tonight, will not be able to impose uh, any salary or benefit requirements on private businesses in Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Did you make a motion already to? No. Would you please? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd make a motion that uh, all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. On the consent agenda, 23-1 to 23-19, under discussion. There is none. Please call. Warren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Surik, Wangaman. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2320 through 2322 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 2323 will be held for 2220. 2324 will be held for 2339. 2325 to 2336 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2337 by Alderman Gisha, Hannah, authorizing the City of Sheboygan's participation in the Wisconsin Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Emergency Assistance Program. President Hannah. Is there a second to that? Second. Any objection to suspension? For objection to the explanation? Yes, I'm glad to give an explanation. Uh, we have a time limit. There's a possibility that we can receive some additional funding if we meet an application deadline. Uh, and so the, the, the city planning department asked me to, to expedite this. Very good. Mm -hmm. There's a motion and a second. Uh, then I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. I'd make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <coughs> there is none. Please call the roll. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clay Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Longman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. The uh, next item, 2338, we're going to pull forward 2353. I think Sue's playing a little game here with me. But, I uh, swear I'm not. 
If you look on page 9, 2353, I need that acted on first. Alderman Gisha, would you make a motion? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Uh, 2353, yes. that, that has your name on it, Alderman? So. Yes. Okay. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Move that the uh, resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion, second. second. Under discussion. Uh, and, I, and I'm asking for suspension of the rules with an explanation, please. Sure. Okay, is there any, there's a second to that. Any objection to suspension? Please explain. Uh, Your Honor, I'm not objecting. Uh, we need to put the resolution upon its passage. Stand corrected. Resolution upon its passage. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Uh, I'm asking for suspension of the rules. And there's no objection to Thank that. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, this resolution has to do with the ice damage that uh, has taken place down at the marina this winter. It is substantial. Uh, we've never seen anything like this. Um, the idea for suspension has to do with, with, the, uh, with the timeliness of boats are going in in about 45 days here and to get the work done. And uh, we're also asking that um, we authorize enter into a contract with one company, and that was the company that built the docks to begin with, um, Floating Dock Systems Incorporated um, in other necessary ancillary services. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Well, Marina, as your light was on, did you speak? That was just to uh, put the resolution upon passage, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay, on 2353, the motion is to put the resolution upon its passage. Any more discussion on that? Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Gisha, maybe you could uh, clear up for the public that these this monies that are being spent to repair these docks are not tax dollars, and I believe they come out, out of some kind of a fund. If you could clarify that, please. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Excellent point, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Um, we're talking about $250,000, which we think will be enough, but we don't know, obviously. There is a fund called the uh, Marina and Harbor Fund, and we have a Marina and Harbor Commission that were kind of combined. The monies in that fund uh, is what we use to build that, that, that boat dock, that cantilever boat dock for all the... Uh, um, for the boat shows and that lower boat dock by Blue Harbor last year. It's the same fund we're talking about here. The monies from that fund flow into it from the boaters, from the uh, dock fees along the river and all the ramp fee dollars flow into this fund. So in this case, you're absolutely right, Alderman Bourne, there are no general fund dollars going into this. It's boaters paying for boaters' expenses. Very good. Thank you. Okay, on 2353, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2338, Alvin Gisha, Ryan, authorizing the repair and reconstruction of the Harbor Marina docks damaged by the ice during the 2008-2009 winter season, which is what the explanation we just heard re uh, refers to. We need a motion to suspend. Alvin Kittleson, did you wish to do this? Uh, well, is this document 2239? 20, no, 2038. Alvin Gisha, you do the honors. Thank you. I ask for suspension of the rules as previously Is explained. Is there a second? Second. Any objection? There is not. Need a motion to put Thank the Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Right. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Ryan? Aye. Thank you. Sirk? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2339 by Alderman Kittleson, Clayunas, Decker, authorizing enter into a contract for the public boat launch improvements at Deland Park. Alderman Kittleson. Yes. Okay. You need to do, you need to do 2324, except and file first. Thank you, Mayor. Let, uh, on document 2324, I move that this uh, RO be accepted and placed on file. Is there a second? Motion and second. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we do 2339 and you Thank need a motion you. to suspend. I, I would need to make a more, I uh, would like ask to suspend the rules on this as well. Is there a second? Second. Any objection? With an explanation here. 
Alderman Rinkwise? No, I'll reserve my right to uh, object with an ex without hearing an explanation, explanation first. Okay. Alderman Kittleson, would you please okay. explain? Sure. Explanation being that we're on a time schedule with this as well. Um, there was some grant money that was allotted for this project. That grant money needs, needs to be uh, used by June 12th. Also, uh, the project, would, they'd like to get started on it as soon as possible so that the, when the boating season is here, that we're not uh, working on those uh, concrete pads at mm -hmm. that time. The sooner that our city engineer can get going on that, the, the better off we'll be as very far good. as the summer season. So, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clay Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 2340 and 41 lies over. 2342 through 2346 to be referred. Report of committee six, 2347 to be referred. Reports of committee seven, 2348 by law and licensing. Recommending revocation of alcohol beverage license number 2521 held by bureau Culinary Schools LLC upon the Common Council's acceptance of the attached findings of facts. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this has to do with uh, the establishment called Milk, uh, owned or owned or formerly owned by Marcel Bureau, and at last uh, last Tuesday's Law and Licensing Committee meeting, we had a quasi-judicial hearing set up for Mr. Bureau to come in and uh, tell us why. He was in violation of the continuation of business uh, ordinance. What that means is that when anybody holds a liquor license in Sheboygan, uh, if, uh, if they, if, first of all, if they get a liquor license, they have to go into business within six months. Then for some reason, if they close and they don't reopen within six months, then we would call them in and ask them why they haven't been open for six months. And if they can't give us a satisfactory, satisfactory explanation, the Law and Licensing Committee and then the Council has the power to re suspend or revoke that license. Well, Mr. Bureau apparently is now working in Fond du Lac and living in Fond du Lac and he was served, served papers to appear at last Tuesday night's Law and Licensing meeting and Mr. Bureau failed to appear and present any evidence in his defense. So as a result, the uh, committee voted unanimously to revoke his uh, liquor license. I need a motion to accept and adopt, though. Uh, a motion to uh, accept and adopt the uh, uh, the RC. There's second. second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call roll. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2349 by finance recommending filing resolution number 2108809 to repeal resolution number 1950809 related to special assessments for repayment of Indiana Avenue from South 14th Street to South 17th Street. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, RC uh, be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 2350 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8141 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity, which makes the applicant ineligible to hold a license until January 7, 2010. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is Amanda White in the audience tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, Ms. White was the, uh, was the applicant who appeared before the council uh, at your meeting two weeks ago, and the council referred this back to uh, law, uh, law and licensing to take another look at this. And what makes uh, Ms. White ineligible for the license, and uh, 
uh, we cleared it up. We clear. We were able to clear it, clear it up in her minds and our minds was the four violations that she has that are related to the license activity is not a Sheboygan statute. It is a Wisconsin statute. So even if this even if this council decided to grant her a license, Madam City Clerk and her office would not be able to issue Miss White a license because of the four violations that she has that are related to the license activity. It's a state statute. So we have, we, we, we can't give her a license because of the state statute. Now, three of the, three of the violations will be expunged from her permanent rec criminal record in January of 2010. And at that time, if she, we instructed her that if she wants to come back and talk to us next January, that we would take a look at granting the license. Not having the bartender's license does not preclude her from working. She can work at the establishment where she's working, except that she cannot work alone and she cannot close the establishment. Otherwise, she can still work, although at this time, because of the state statute, we're unable to, uh, to grant her the license. So I recommend that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under further discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Kleinus? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2351 lies over. 2352 will be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2219, RO number 3960809 by the City Plan Commission recommending repealing and recreating the cities of Sheboygan's floodplain zoning ordin ordinance be an Appendix A to the Sheboygan's Municipal Code. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2220 RO number 3970809 by the City Plan Commission. Recommending that the property located at 605 Wildwood Avenue not be rezoned from Class SR5 uh, suburban residential to Class Urban Industrial Classification. I need a motion to accept and file and to accept and file 2323 also. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Say those words again because that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Your motion to accept, accept and file and put the uh, File the ordinance and also uh, accept and file 2323. Is that your motion? Yes, it is. Very good. Second. There's a second. Any discussion? There is none. Please. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Alderman McLeanness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just a question. Uh, this is a recommendation not to rezone. We recently rezoned some property in another part of town. Can I have some answer or explanation from the commission as to why you did not want to rezone this one? Thank you. Alderman Montemayo. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Could we have Mr. Sokolovsky speak? I'll open the floor for Mr. Sokolovsky. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on opening the floor? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sokolovsky, please come up to the podium, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Common Council. Um, that's an excellent question because we were just here the other day and we were rezoning another parcel on Broughton Drive and we were recommending favorably for that particular parcel and the reason for that was it was utilized commercially it was in an area that was going to have a commercial zoning a little bit less intense in a residential neighborhood in this particular case what we're looking at is taking a residential property and zoning it to urban industrial and we don't have any idea what the proposed user is in essence they're just coming in to put a vacant undeveloped parcel and have it zoned urban industrial. And our concern is that there's several residences directly on the east side of this property. So whatever use eventually is gonna be on this property is gonna impact those homes. So the idea was we felt that the urban industrial without a specific use 
um, is too intense of a use right now. And it's not to say that the plan commission would totally object to any particular zone. There may be other zonings that have less intense uses that might be okay there. But in this particular case, we didn't believe it was the right zoning and there were other areas in the city where there's urban industrial lands already available. Thank you. The uh, applicant, uh, in that instance, I, I chair that commission, the applicant was perfectly all right with the, uh, with the decision because not even he knew what he wanted to put there yet. So uh, the doors wasn't shut on him. It was just when you find out what you want to put on there, come back. Okay, uh, we are on 2220. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2237, resolution number 2050809 by Alderman Gisha, Cleonis, Bauk, and Montemayor. Authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for loan from Alliant Energy to replace high pressure air compressor at the wastewater treatment plant. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion. Pardon me, that the resolution be put upon its passage. I apologize. Motion and second under discussion. Uh, as an explanation, if anyone's curious, we seem to do this every year with Alliant. They give you a favorable loan term for a piece of equipment that the savings on energy for that piece of equipment pays for your loan. Right. Okay. Any more? Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2238, resolution number 206-0809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Bauk, and Montemayor, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a shared savings program service agreement with Alliant Energy. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. This is the companion document to the item we previously just voted on. Thank you. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Sirk? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2239, resolution number 2070809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Bauk, and Montemayor. Authorizing appropriate staff to take the necessary actions to issue a request for proposals for cleaning and custodial services for the new police department via contracted services and, and existing personnel to continue the service not to extend beyond May 1st, 2009. Alderman Gishon. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second under discussion. I'd like to offer uh, uh, an amendment to the resolution, please. Okay. Uh, in the first sentence where you see the term and therefore, and, and uh, every time it's noted thereafter under request for proposals, I'd like to amend that to request for information. It's a vehicle, an RFI is different than an RFP and our purchasing director suggests we use an RFI in this case, which is a little quicker method of getting a snapshot and a temperature of, of what we can expect for fees. <laughs> and, uh, and then we would then follow an RFP procedure with, with specifics on it. Uh, the second amendment I'd like to make is under the first whereas. It currently reads, whereas the city council has determined to utilize contracted services. I don't believe we have determined we've to utilize contracted services. I think we, so I would like to change the word utilize to explore contracted services. I think that's more in the spirit of what this council discussed. So it will read then, whereas the city uh, council has determined to explore contracted services. Um, and uh, the final item I'd like to um, address is on the one, two, three, fourth whereas, and this is in uh, conjunction with the previous amended word. It currently reads, whereas a contract for cleaning services will be in place approximately the beginning of May. I'd like to change, change the word will to may be in place because we won't know and obviously until we get the, the information back and review it. And, uh, and everywhere you see RFP changing to RFI, and I've supplied the city clerk with 
um, those items. Uh, for is there a second to that amendment? Second. second, under discussion on the amendment only. <coughs> Alderman Kittleson on the amendment. Thank you, Mayor. I, that, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, Alderman Gisha made those changes because I think that makes it much clearer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On the amendment, then, we will call the, the vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Uh, thank you. I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one thing we have to be careful of here, and, and that is exactly what these <clears throat> cleaning personnel are going to be doing at the police department. And the only reason I say this is I was in uh, Officer Todd Preby's office a couple of weeks ago. And as we came around the back side of the building to go to his office, um, one of our present uh, uh, personnel, Department of Public Works, the DPW personnel that does the cleaning there was coming out of his office. He just got done cleaning it. And as I'm sitting in his office talking to him, I'm looking up at a dry erase board he has on the wall. And it basically is all of the uh, NAD work that they're doing on garbage picks, et cetera, throughout the city, which is his neighborhood policing anti-drug work. And this is all up on his wall for me to see. And for anybody else, that is cleaning his office to see. Um, so we have to be careful on outside cleaning services exactly if the proper security is there to allow outside services to come into the police department. Police we have right now, the, the personnel we have right now do have background checks. Um, they are authorized to be there. So just so we keep this in mind moving forward in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm in full agreement with Alderperson Ryan. Uh, that's why item one under uh, be it further resolved is all contract personnel entering the building must submit and successfully pass a comprehensive security and background check to the full satisfaction of the chief of police. Good. Thank you. Okay, we do have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Please call the roll. Rongovan? Aye. Warren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Kittleson, Kleinis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2250, resolution number 208809 by Alderman Montemayor, Surik, Decker, and Meyer, establishing the salaries for certain non represented positions in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Can there just be some explanation as to what we're doing? I, I admit I should have called you ahead of time and did not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think the resolution pretty much speaks for itself. It is about the reorganization of the variety of supervisors, and this sets the salaries of those reorganized people. And it's budget neutral. It does not add, ask us for any further money. Does that, does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay, there is no more discussion. Mr. President Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. I just had a question. Now it says that these are these are non-represented non-represented positions. Were these were these uh, promotions that were made from people that were in represented positions, and then these are promotions, and now they're non-represented? All we want to Thank you again, Your Honor. And I don't remember if any of them were. were uh, Union people before or not, but probably Mr. Bittner would know exactly if they were. Do you want that answer? Mr. Bittner is here. Uh, Bill, would you please come up. The um positions that are in here represent changes that were in that reorganization that the council approved some time ago. It's the same level of supervision we had last year, but in that reorganization, uh, or in the process, we've had two people choose to retire, uh, and therefore they will be promoted. We've committed to promote from within, and 
therefore there are some promotions in here uh, that represent uh, promoting from the bargaining unit uh, into managerial positions. I believe two of them are. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Uh, on 2250, there is a motion to put it upon put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2354, a resolution by Alman Gisha authorizing the issuance of a request for qualifications for labor services to assist the city through the collective bargaining strategy development and negotiation process for the successor labor contracts to the current 2007-2009 contracts. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Thank you. It, uh, this is in response to uh, some requests at our last council meeting. Um, uh, you'll note that we're using a different type of vehicle here as well for council uh, information. We're asking for a request for qualifications, which is uh, different than an RFP, different, you know, we use an RFI before our, our new city purchasing agent, our shared person with the county is making some of these requests. And uh, it's a really good idea. Um, it not only takes into account the financial aspect, but the experience level. It's like you don't want to go to the cheapest heart surgeon in the world. So it kind of melds the fact that, sure, you want to save as much money as you can, but you do want somebody who's, who's not going to roll you out in a gurney. So um, that's what this is meant to bridge. Very good. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2355, a resolution by Alderman Gisha, Hannah, amending resolution number 1250809, approving the 2009 2013 capital improvements program for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I thought I would pawn this one off on Alderperson Hannah. <laughs> Alderman Hannah. Thank you so much, Alderman Gisha. Um, <clears throat> first, I need to suspend the rules. Second. So that's a motion, and then there's a second. Any, any objection? The objections come in unless you explain. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to explain uh, that we're really, Eisner cannot, because of a state situation, Eisner cannot start until 2011. So we're freeing up some money that was originally earmarked for Eisner, and it's going to go to the uh, flood area on, what is it, New York and Fifth. Mm -hmm. on that so it's just it's a timing situation where we need to allocate resources okay there's no objection i need a res motion to put the resolution upon his passage i'd make a motion to put the resolution upon his passage is there a second second second, second. Un under further discussion third alderman Rinfish. no yep. please go to roll gisha aye hannah aye heideman aye kittleson aye kleinus aye meyer aye montemayor aye Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Sirk? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 13 ayes. 2255, we just did, right? 2355. 2356, a resolution by Alman Gisha, Montemayor, Baup, and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, advanced funds to the 2009 capital improvements projects for the 5th and New York Avenue construction contract. Advance being repaid with the borrowing in April 2009. Uh, Alderman Gisha, Alderman, President Hanna, I think he's going to yeah. bum that one on you too. You gonna, oh. Please. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to once again this evening, unfortunately, ask for suspension of the rules. Is there a second? Uh, Any objection? There won't be unless you. Withholding the objection until uh, <laughs> explanation. <laughs> Uh, the explanation, uh, as noted, is we need to advance some funds into the project until we do our bonding and then the money is going to come back in with interest back. So we got to get going on the project. It's kind of a do to and from deal in one pocket <laughs> and back in the other. So uh, if there's no objection to uh, suspension, I will ask that the, uh, that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under further discussion, there being none, please call the roll. Hannah? 
Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warren. Aye. Decker. Aye. And Gisha. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2357 will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 2358, resolution by Alderman Gisha, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor, designating the Finance Department as the city's repository for all grant requests and applications related to the American Recovery and Reinvestment Plans program, programs and other programs created from the federal stimulus package. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Uh, if I could uh, explain what we're trying to do here, is if you go on the, um, the website for this new federal so-called stimulus program, you'll see that there's, under, even under the state website and so forth, you can apply for funds for fire, police, DPW projects, emergency government, public works, just a myriad of different things. We've got a myriad of different departments. Some of these expenses uh, and projects would have trailing expenses. Uh, meaning it's not just one lump sum and you pay for it and you move on. You got long-term uh, uh, trailing expenses ongoing. In other words, every year that same expense is every there. And that has to be accounted for, at least planned for somehow. So this uh, resolution makes the finance department kind of the repository or the funnel, the end of the funnel, for all these different departments uh, to, uh, to funnel their requests through. Otherwise, it's kind of difficult for finance who's supposed to keep track of all these trailing expenses and doing budgeting in the future to have any idea what anybody's applying for. So um, that's the uh, the spirit behind this. Very good. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just encourage everybody to support this. I think it's very important. It's very important for Sheboygan and every community throughout the United States to set something up like this uh, because one-time money that generates future expenses needs to be carefully managed. So I'm, I'm real pleased that Alderman Gisha brought this forward. Thank you. If there's no more discussion, please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2359 goes to public protection and safety. 2360 goes to public protection and safety. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2361 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That goes to law and licensing. Get a motion to adjourn. <coughs> President Hanna. So moved. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned.